Hello, my name is Brian Fulton, Program Director for Anesthesia Technology here at OCCC. I'd like to take a few minutes to talk to you about this growing and dynamic profession. Before I dive into the program though, I would like you to take a couple of seconds and think about what you might already know about anesthesia. Likely you're thinking anesthesia puts people to sleep for surgery. And while that's true, it's important to note that there's an entire team dedicated to keeping you safe while undergoing surgery. And a core member of that team is the anesthesia technologist. Anesthesia technologists assist licensed anesthesia providers in the full spectrum of anesthesia services, from helping getting patients off to sleep to keeping critically ill patients safe during surgery. So if you're someone who desires a fast-paced work environment where you get to utilize a wide array of skills, then the Anesthesia Technology Program is the program for you, and OCCC is the program to take you there. The mission of Oklahoma City Community College's Anesthesia Technology Program is to provide academically rigorous instruction designed to prepare graduates to assume the roles and responsibilities of the certified anesthesia technologist and to operate in the anesthesia care team as defined by the American Society of Anesthesia Technologists and Technicians. The program recognizes that quality anesthesia technology education must incorporate innovation, integrity, and diversity across the curriculum to prepare graduates to assume the roles and responsibilities of the anesthesia technologist and to ensure quality health care is achieved in the community. We offer an Associate in Applied Science degree in anesthesia technology. Our program operates on a one plus one format, which culminates in 64 to 66 total credits. Now, what does one plus one mean? It means that the first year of study is spent predominantly working on prerequisite coursework, and your second year of study is spent focusing on anesthesia core curriculum with a couple of other ancillary courses. The prerequisites required to get admittance into the anesthesia technology program are medical terminology, English composition one and two, a math class of 1483 or higher, general chemistry one, or the survey of general organic and biochemistry with its accompanying lab, anatomy and physiology one and two, or you can choose to take human anatomy and human physiology. Additionally, you're required to take one general education course. This can be a course of your choice, or you can come talk to an academic advisor or myself to figure out a course that works for you. We also recommend that you take Success in College and Life, or SCL 1001, American Federal Government, and one of History 1483 or for History 1493. While these, course, while these three courses are not required as prerequisites, they are required to confer a degree. Our program is a selective admission program, and we will accept up to 20 students per cohort. We rely on an 18 point scale for preference points to determine who gets admitted. If accepted, you'll receive notification approximately three weeks after the application deadline. Our application deadline usually occurs in the second or third week of February. Once accepted, you will need to complete the items in your acceptance letter. These include verifying and completing any missing vaccinations, drug testing, and a background check. You will also complete competencies necessary to enter the clinical environment. Additionally, in between the acceptance letter and the summer semester start date, you'll have to attend an orientation with myself, fellow faculty, and health professions administration. Here we lay out everything you need to know regarding expectations, policies, and standards. This way you'll have the best chance of success in this 10-month journey you're embarking on. Our core curriculum begins in the summer with Anesthesia 1112 and Anesthesia 1124. In Anesthesia 1112, Introduction to Anesthesia Technology, you're introduced to the operating room environment, healthcare personnel, the anesthesia care team, and other ancillary aspects of the operating room. Here you learn about sterilization, concepts of high-level disinfection, basic airway management, and basic concepts related around anesthesia. In Anesthesia 1124, you're introduced to the fundamentals of anesthesia practice. Here we discuss things like general anesthesia, neuraxial anesthesia, and other basic considerations around fundamental anesthesia knowledge. Here, we like to refer to the patients as healthy. In this course, you're introduced to anesthesia concepts with patients with no comorbidities and no outlying illnesses. If you pass these courses, and by passing we mean maintaining a 74%, which is required for all anesthesia courses, you're allowed to permit to the fall. In the fall, you're introduced to three courses. 
anesthesia 1134, anesthesia 1143, and anesthesia 1155. In anesthesia 1134, instrumentation 1, you're introduced to this, the anesthesia gas machine. Here you learn the ins and outs of this entire machine, how it operates, how to troubleshoot it, how to make sure you can manage a patient safely on this device. In anesthesia 1143, pharmacology, you're introduced to the basic principles of pharmacology, the basic considerations around anesthesia pharmacology, and your role as an anesthesia technologist as it relates to the medications needed to provide safe anesthesia. In anesthesia 1155, fundamentals two, you're introduced to the patients who have comorbidities. This course builds on anesthesia 1124. No longer are the patients healthy receiving surgery, but these patients have multiple comorbidities. We also discuss complex surgeries like cardiovascular and orthopedic. Here you build on your fundamentals learned in the summer and you develop more comprehensive understanding of invasive techniques used to keep patients safe under anesthesia. Now that you've completed your second semester in the anesthesia technology program, it's time to talk about your final semester. In the spring, you'll take anesthesia 2114, 2125, and 2133. In anesthesia 2114, instrumentation 2, we're no longer talking about the anesthesia gas machine. Instead, we're talking about the ancillary equipment used to keep patients safe during anesthesia. These include the cell saver, intraaortic balloon pump, ultrasounds, transesophageal echocardiograms, and a number of other devices. We also incorporate concepts of trauma, pediatrics, and OBGYN in this semester. In anesthesia 2125, Fundamentals 3, you're introduced to pediatrics, trauma, and OBGYN. We talk about trauma anesthesia and, the ma and massive transfusion, and we correlate that to what we've learned in Instrumentation 2 and the various other topics. In Anesthesia 2133, your capstone class, or professional aspects of anesthesia technology, you learn about all of the ethical and legal implications of being an anesthesia technologist. We also talk about the NCE, National Certification Exam. And we also talk about building things like your professional resume and cover letter to aid you in the job hunting process. After this semester, you're no longer a student technologist. You're a graduate of the Anesthesia Technology Program and board eligible to sit for the NCE certification examination. Throughout the entire program, you'll participate in lecture, lab, simulation, and clinical experiences. Beginning in the summer, you will participate in a minimum of 50 clinical hours or five clinical opportunities. You'll also participate in approximately 48 hours of lab and 30 hours of simulation. In the fall and spring semesters, you will complete a minimum of 300 clinical hours or 150 hours per semester. You'll also participate in 192 hours of lab and simulation over those two semesters. Our program offers lectures on Mondays and Tuesdays, with labs typically occurring on Mondays and Tuesdays in the evening. As for clinical, we schedule students on Wednesdays or Thursdays, depending on clinical availability and site availability. Our one, we offer one clinical per week for 10 hours. For the most part, our clinical assignments will occur at OU because it's the only level one trauma center in the state and we want to make sure that you have the best clinical experience possible. Concerning our time requirements, as you might expect, all of these hours, it's a massive commitment. We expect the anesthesia technologist student to spend approximately 25 to 30 hours per week on anesthesia technology related classes and activities. You may have noticed I've mentioned a board exam. The profession of anesthesia technology is regulated by a national association, the American Society of Anesthesia Technologists and Technicians, or ASAT. ASAP produces, manages, and establishes the educational and professional standards for certified technologists. The OCCC AT program is an approved program by both KHEP's Commission on Accreditation for Anesthesia Technology Education as well as ASAT, meaning that at the end of this hard-fought road, you are eligible to take this premier certification. So now that you've completed the anesthesia technology program and passed your certification exam, what now? Well, the field of anesthesia technology is rapidly growing especially in Oklahoma. But since you'll be joining a special class of allied, allied health professionals, you'll be highly sought after nationally. As for the cost of the program, this can vary year to year, but for current estimates, you can look at the screen below.
So if you're interested in taking the plunge and making anesthesia technology your next career, your next step's easy. Go to campus, meet with an academic advisor, tell them that you want to be an anesthesia technology major, and have them put you on an academic plan so that you can see success and be admitted into the program. If you have any other questions, you can reach out to advising at the number below, but you can also reach me directly if you have any other questions about the program and profession. Thank you.